stand by. The cast will join us in one minute. Please welcome back to the stage, Greg David. Wow, what a finale, huh? Or what a season beginning, huh? Crazy Eva Pierce. Even when you're dead, you're not quite dead. Sorry, I'm just getting my phone going here. All right, so last session of the day. Let's bring everybody out. Oh, I'm supposed to say welcome back to those of you joining us via Facebook. We just saw one heck of a great episode. And you will too eventually. But if you don't want to know anything about the premiere and you're not here, then maybe you don't want to watch. Although, you know, we're not going to give, out, give too much away. But let's, enough about me. Let's bring the cast out. He plays Constable Slugger Jackson. You also know him from Orphan Black, Mr. Christian Brun. <laughs> Standing in for Mr. Oh. Yeah, nice to meet you, man. She plays the inspector's much better half here again, Harwin Humphreys. You know her as the newest brilliant mind in the Murdoch morgue, Miss Rebecca James. Welcome back, Muna Traore. It's Inspector Brackenreed, Mr. Thomas Craig. You love him as Murdoch's right-hand man, it's Constable Crabtree, Johnny Harris. She plays the love of Murdoch's life, it's suffragette Dr. Julia Ogden, played by Ellen Joy. Hello. And once again, it's the man who brings Murdoch to life, Yannick Besson. Hey. And showrunner, Peter Mitchell. Well, that was a dramatic first episode for season 10, I think. How'd you guys like that? I don't know what it was like in the theater, but in that final scene, it was like, everybody's like. <gasps> <laughs> so uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Julia's actions from season nine coming over into season 10. She's definitely not herself, Peter. Why was it important to address that and show that she's having some emotional issues um, heading into this season? Well, I think we're often cavalier in, in, you know, in people's actions. It's, it's, I don't think it's easy to kill somebody. You know, I think it can have a psychic cost. Yeah. And so we just wanted to play that out for a while. And Ellen, what about you? When you when you get to see that you're going to play a little bit different, you know, a different side of your character, does that excite you when you see that in the script? Oh, absolutely! It's always fun to play different colors, and um, it's funny when when. I 
it's been a, a while since we shot it. And so when the episode started, I'm like, why do I look like such a sad sack? And then it all came back to me. <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but um, you know, at first it could be a little bit confusing because she really isn't herself. Um, but that stands to reason, doesn't it? So it's really, um, it's fun to play those different things. And I, I just love, there was a real look of annoyance there. I've never seen Julia look that way before, like death stare. Uh, and, and the, the difficulty of it. It seems like a natural way to deal with such a traumatic event. It seemed to me as though, at least I was kind of doing a count where it seemed as though every scene she was in, she was drinking. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So she's suffering from PTSD, essentially, right? Is essentially. That well, we just needed another drinking <laughs> She likes drinking. to drink. We, we know that about game, Julia. Right? We Let's... need another drinking game. It can't be Brackenreed all the time. <laughs> Can you, do you want to tease how that storyline kind of develops? Because at this point, William's kind of like, he doesn't think that there's anything wrong. The only one that really is seeing anything wrong right now is Brackenreed, and he's even said it to, to William. Can you talk a little bit more about how that's going to evolve, or would you prefer that you, you keep this spoiler free? I think I prefer to keep it spoiler free, and I think, you know, we pop right back into that story uh, the minute part two, uh, the minute the part two starts. It's just, no, I have nothing to say. <laughs> uh, Yannick, the, the premiere kind of incorporates, we had talked about this before, the, the Bachelor, you know, the Bachelor franchise with all these debutantes trying to, to win a man. Um, how much was that for you guys? How much fun was it to shoot that and, and have all those ladies around and, and, and vying for all this attention? Well, it's such a part of... Uh, Today, you know, I mean, uh, love it or hate it, it's a huge, massive phenomenon that's spun off to different countries. You've got The Bachelorette as well. I mean, it's something that people are interested in. And, and I mean, the opportunity to sort of poke fun at it is, uh, is definitely a delicious one. Uh, but also, you know, you get to split the characters down the line of who thinks it's a good idea, who doesn't, and people's reactions. So, uh, you know, that as a backdrop is a lot of fun. And um, you, you've got these girls that are, you know, backstabbing and, and posturing and all that. I mean, it's hilarious. And of course, Johnny, Crabtree is the one that knows everything that's going on in the gossip world. <laughs> He's got his finger on the pulse. <laughs> I think it's uh, because I, I normally sort of talk fast, so that you have whole swaths of exposition. You need to find out five different girls and their and their bios in in a minute and a half. So I think maybe they they get they they give that to me to just spit out really quickly. <laughs> it was quite nice. It was actually quite a nice um, sort of reminder of how lucky we are working with those girls. A lot of those gals, obviously, they're quite young. They're just sort of coming into their careers. And uh, they were all so sort of genuinely excited to be making an appearance on, you know, a, a legit um, popular show. And uh, just seeing their sort of excitement and enthusiasm, and to to be a part of be a part of Murdoch Mysteries was a, a sort of a nice reminder that that we get to do that every day. It was a little bit of a carry moment with the blood splashing down and everything. At least that's what I got. Was that an homage to that, or am I just reading way too deep into it? Oh, I, I don't think you're reading way too deep into it. <laughs> I do worry about that. I do worry about overanalyzing. No, it was just something we came up with. There was nothing. Uh, now, I did forget to mention off the top, and I need to apologize that uh, obviously Lachlan Murdoch is not here. It's not because he's been killed off, or at least I don't think he's been killed off of the show. Uh, he <laughs> just he'll be pulled off. Yeah, he's just out of town this weekend, so it's not that he wasn't invited or anything like that. He just isn't here, so I just wanted to make that, that point. Uh, Johnny, can you talk about Crabtree's constant struggle to find a lady? He's been through a lot. <laughs> Is there a time where you just like you want to say forget about it? Like, let's just not even try to find a girl for Crabtree, or so, some alone time? Just take some me time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, season ten, here. it doesn't get any better for Crabtree. It's uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's a real roller coaster ride. I, I, I can't give too much away, but. Crabtree's uh, romantic struggles continue. I think he's doing really well compared to Lachlan's character. Starting to do pretty well, actually. It's yeah. compared to Higgins, he's like cleaning up. 
That is true. Higgins is kind of the new guy failing at everything when it used to be Crabtree, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's, Crabtree's like the wily veteran now. He's worldly. Well, it, it, you know, it, it's interesting. It's, it's sort of, it, it's a little bit of a maturing for Crabtree. I mean, for him, with Nina Bloom being the burlesque dancer and, uh, um, and the inspector and, and Murdoch are, are not, uh, at the end of last season, we're not keen for him to see this girl for, you know, usually he does, Crabtree's quite obedient. He sort of does as he's told. And I think it's, he's like uh, sh showing a little bit of gumption or wherewithal that he's sort of following his heart rather than, than taking orders. Pete and I were uh, having a discussion where we were talking about how Crabtree often finds himself in situations where other people make decisions for him. And, uh, so I think, yeah, he's sort of standing on his own two feet in this relationship. Um, but then, well, I can't, I can't go in. I can't tell, I can't tell you about it. But anyway, it's a great season. Ten is going to be great. Do you do you want him to have a steady girlfriend, or are you happy to have these relationships, you know, ups and downs? I think just dozens of meaningless trysts with several young. Excellent. Uh, Christian, you're lucky enough to appear on two acclaimed Canadian TV series that air around the world. Which is better to work on, Orphan Black or Murdoch Mistress? Are you trying to get me fired or something no. or get some dirt here? Uh, it's incredible to work on both shows. They're so, so different from each other, which as an actor, it's, it's a dream to get a chance to work on a period show and one that has as much of a following and storied history as Murdoch. So they're both completely different beasts. And uh, just, I, I feel incredibly lucky to, to get to play in both time periods in both worlds. They're, they're just so different. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a dream come true, honestly. And in both cases, you're, you're bringing levity to shows that are very dark and very serious. So that, you know, you, you guys, whether it's you on Orphan Black or, or it's, uh, you know, Higgins and Crabtree and Jackson on... He's yeah. a specialist. <laughs> the Keystone Cops. People love to see bad things happen to my characters. I don't know if it's my look or something, but, but it's fun to play. It gives me a lot of fun stuff to do. Do you want him to move up the ranks, the police ranks? I kind of like Jackson being the sort of... The, the black sheep of the of the uh, the station. I, I, I like that Brackenry likes to uh, You know <laughs> Yell at him all the time. I I like where he is. I like that. He's a junior constable. I, I love whenever I get a chance to play um, Yeah, it's it's fun Because I came into the show in season five and more officially in season six sporadically uh, my my positioning in the constable world is is below uh, Henry and there are even times where I've seen Henry Higgins pl pull rank on me and, and I have to comply to that and I think that military structure being there in the police forces is, is definitely an important thing to represent on the show Muna you're the newest one to the cast. So what can you say about Rebecca's journey in season 10? Now, Peter when you and I spoke after the season 9 finale you you hinted that we were going to see Rebecca at school and her, her education can, can either of you talk? Muna, do you want to talk a little bit about whether that's true or not? Well, I don't know how far I can go with it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, you definitely see Rebecca grow a lot this season. I think she comes out of her shell a lot more. Um, and she's a lot more confident. I, I don't know. I don't want to give away anything. <laughs> I mean, she does. Just keep watching his eyes. <laughs> she does <laughs> leave like the morgue a lot more this season. Yeah, she's out and about. She's doing a lot more of the coroner stuff. She splits the job with Julia a bit more. Um, we, we, we see her uh, away from the station. She's not in the morgue in every scene. <laughs> so, but where she goes, you'll have to watch to find out. <laughs> What's it been like joining this cast? Because, you know, a, see, a show that's been on for going into its 10th season, very, a lot of the, the folks on this panel have been there from the very beginning. What was that like? Was there a little bit of a nervousness joining the cast last season? Oh, my God, totally. <laughs> I remember my first day walking into the cafeteria and feeling like I was in high school. <laughs> like, where do I sit? Um, yeah, no, it's been wonderful. Everybody's been so welcoming, and I feel, I feel really grateful to walk into a show where... Everybody loves each other so much, and there's such a great community. I mean, you can't ask for anything better than that. 
And it's very different, you know, obviously for everybody on the panel, this show is very different from anything out there that's on, on television, Canadian television, it's a time period. So was it a little bit of a, what's been interesting to you doing the research, reading the scripts into what Toronto was like at this time um, for a character, a character like Rebecca James? I think it's such a relief to finally see the story of an African Canadian in that time period, because I haven't seen anything else that, that shares that story and it's, it's so amazing to see that we're working in not only the history of Toronto, but of people of color. Uh, last season we had the color blind, blinded episode. So we saw um, what was going on in the black church. This season we'll see a, a bit of something else. <laughs> <laughs> Other things. Um, but yeah, I'm so glad, like, uh, there's a strong history of people of color in Ontario, and I'm glad to be part of sharing that story. Arwen, it's, uh, yes. let's talk a little bit about um, Margaret's journey this season. What, is there anything that you can tell us? Um, I think uh, one of the things I've really been enjoying over the last few seasons especially is um, the evolution of Margaret. Um, that she's sort of slowly becoming, uh, I mean, she'll always be Thomas's wife, um, but it's, she's sort of coming into her own. Hope so. <laughs> Sorry? So I hope so. We'll see. Oh. Yeah, well, you know. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> You're anyway. going to get me in more trouble with my boss. <laughs> so now we know what Arwen would like to see happen with Margaret in season 10. <laughs> Um, no, but I mean, uh, yeah, I always, I, I love getting my scripts because, like I said, over the last few years, I, I more than once have been like, ooh, that's fun, you know? And um, yeah, I think that I, I, season 10 shall continue to evolve, I think, into many different, yeah, anyway. Mm -hmm. I know it's so tough. I'm asking these questions, you can't say anything. No, not really. Stuff I mean, happens and it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas, one of the interesting things that I've seen in Brackenreed over the last few seasons is that, you know, even though he's very much a conservative, he's starting to move forward with the times with the, you know, women, you know, wanting to gain the right to vote and women's issues and things like that. And I'm really starting to view him as a father figure. Is that the way? I'm just getting older. <laughs> no, it's your character. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't think you can work with uh, Murdoch's character for 10 years and not not have the liberal kind of like up-to-date progressive methods rub off on a character. So that obviously has happened. I mean, he's still a bit feisty and stuff, but you know, you saw the scene where he replicates the scene that we, uh, that Helen and I had in season eight or nine, when I was suffering from like being scared and stuff. I was trying to replicate that, yeah, so. Let's Didn't get very far, did you? It's terrible. She's no, you were, yeah. Get out. Get out. Oh, we had, a, we had a drink, though. <laughs> yeah, that's a double drinking game one right there. I mean, both of you guys. You got to take two shots. That was something we found out about at the very beginning of the day was that it's actually, you know, we think is whiskey. And, well, we don't really think it's whiskey in those glasses, although it would be great if it wasn't, but that it's just, you know, water with food coloring in it. So how tired do you get of drinking that water with food coloring in it time after time? I got pretty tired of that in the first episode, that's for sure. I'm like, couldn't we mix this up? Some other flavor? It's kind of orange. Yeah. I don't know what it's there's, supposed there's to be. There's a couple of decanters of this fluid kicking around and you never know how long <laughs> it's been there, really. <laughs> So you're always having to check with a props guy to see how fresh it is. <laughs> is this fluid from the morgue? Is this fluid we're allowed to drink? All kinds it's embalming fluid, mostly. <laughs> I feel bad for you guys. I get whiskey every time. <laughs> I request it, though, so. <laughs> it's in your rider. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the Great Fire. Obviously, I don't have to drink anything. No. Oh. <laughs> Would you like to? Actually, we, we do. We do. No. Oh. <laughs> we, a few, we're gonna have a few more minutes until we take some questions from the audience so if you want to start lining up behind the two microphones i'll just have a couple more questions and then we'll turn it over to you guys um what can anybody say about the great fire obviously you can't give too much away but can you talk about this next episode at all and and what viewers can expect higgins did it 
Isn't that the best? Isn't that the greatest story? It's so much fun. Higgins didn't do it. <laughs> but maybe he did. Uh, the great fire, the, the, uh, the essence of the fire, the, the, the uh, aftermath of the fire takes up the first part of the second episode. Uh, they are looking for the cause of the fire, but that's a, a secondary plot. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what the second episode focuses on is uh, who's, killering, who's killing all the bachelorettes yeah. and, and uh, uh, Dr. Julia Ogden coming to terms with her psychic episodes mm -hmm. and will the Murdoch marriage be well? Groans. Ooh. Striking at the <laughs> core. <laughs> <laughs> that house may not get uh, maybe built in vain. <laughs> what can you say, Peter, about guest stars or, or guest historical characters? Again, when I spoke to you at the end of last season, you'd mentioned H.P. Lovecraft. Is there anything that you can talk about? Any characters you can talk about to kind of tease the upcoming season? I mean, it, it, it comes, I mean, these seasons, you know, when you never leave them, uh, they start to glunk together. Uh, <laughs> So we do have some historical guest uh, characters, not, not as many this year as we've had in the past. Uh, we have a few more historical events. We, we, we do spend time uh, uh, with the, uh, the St. Louis World's Fair and, and there was an Olympic Games this year. Uh, one of our cast uh, becomes an active participant in the Olympic Games. Uh, hmm. yeah. <laughs> We have some, uh, a lot of recurring characters that... A lot uh, of our favorites. Yeah, a lot back. of our recurring characters are back. Uh, 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 Terrence, obviously, uh, uh, unexpectedly. Uh, James Pendrick, uh, in, a, in a very strange way. Uh, <laughs> and and H.P. Uh, Lovecraft is probably an interesting uh, historical character who, who will be filming in the next few weeks. He was only 15 years old at the time. Uh, uh, that's off the top of my head. That's all I can think of in terms of <coughs> historical characters, but I'm sure I've probably missed two. Okay. Um, so let's, let's turn it over to the audience. We've got lineups, I'm sure. So let's start over here on the right, please. Hi, um, I'm Emily from Toronto. Um, I actually wanted to ask, Yannick, I know you directed a few episodes. Um, I wanted to know kind of what that experience was like balancing both and um, kind of how, if you would do that again or. <laughs> I, I really, really enjoyed it a lot. Um, it was, I, I felt the largest the times where I make the largest sort of contribution to the show um, because y you really have to collaborate with every single person and um, thankfully you know my castmates and, and the crew were very supportive uh, because when, when I started I, you know it was new and uh, as much as you go in there guns a blazing you, you, there are things you don't know and there, there are areas you, you need help um, I really, really enjoy it. Uh, one of the things that we've been striving for and, and the network has been striving for is, you know, uh, equality. And, and so uh, it's very easy for me to step aside and allow for some of the director's blocks to be available to other directors. And that's currently what we're, we're doing. And, and, you know, as we go on in years, having fresh blood and new people uh, creatively come in and, and do the episodes is, um, is also uh, important. So I'm not directing at the moment, although I probably will again at some point. Um, uh, the hardest part of acting and directing is the acting. <laughs> For anybody on the panel, what's he like as a director? <laughs> He's one of my favorites. Because, <laughs> because, you know, when you speak when you speak to different directors, everybody kind of has their own way of doing things. And certainly, actors that 
move on or our directors have it bring a whole different you know vision to when they're directing right yeah Yanni understands acting and the actual mechanics of the way cameras and lights work and everything so he's got a knowledge of everything across the board some directors are good with the actors and some are good with the cameras but not many seem to mix both worlds over here to the left hi my name's Nora and I was wondering if you could possibly um, hold on. <laughs> if you could sign my hat <laughs> Sure, I'll sign your hat. <laughs> oh, not me. Who did you want to sign your hat? Did you want everybody on the panel except me to sign your hat? I'm going to assume that you mean the actors in the show? Yeah, and Pete? Okay, great. Yeah, we'll do that. I love that uniform. That well, uniform we'll, looks awesome. Yeah, we'll bring you up to the stage after the session's done, and then we'll get it signed, okay? Okay. All right, so we'll stay. Fabulous outfit, by the way. Yeah. Fabulous. Stay with the left over here, please. Um, hi, my name is Maria. I'm from Guelph, actually. And um, I had the pleasure of meeting Johnny and Thomas uh, last year when they were filming on Douglas Street. Um, I just love the show. I, I love all of you on the show. I couldn't imagine it with any other character. But I do have a specific. I will tell you, we got a new detective this year. Oh, then I'll Young stop detective, watching. Young detective. Is Elaine Len staying on the show? I'll keep watching. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> you having your detective on the show? A we protege. Do have, we do have a new detective ah. on the show this year. Cool. He's actually uh, uh, royal, <laughs> royal blood. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, we'll leave that to. I I have a specific question for Elaine. Um, Elaine, over the years. Um, the show has become a part of our family, and you have taken up a lot of causes. You, um, your character has been way past the time period, way ahead of your time. And um, I, I see that character like it's my role model. I just admire that character and the passion for all those causes and things that were taboo. Um, and my question is, how much of that do you bring to the role from your personal life, if any? <laughs> so your question is, how much of that is Passion and that um, is that part of me, or is or is am I part of? I'm a bit confused about which. So way. is your is your personality like a rebel-like personality? Do you bring <laughs> some of that to the role? I don't. <laughs> She's so different. <laughs> Elaine had dinner at my parents' house when we were shooting in Newfoundland. My parents could not believe how different Helene was from Dr. Ogden. They were just, I mean, Helene, it was sort of, you know, kicking back, having a few drinks and an Australian accent sort of pouring out. And it's just, it's nice. But it's a testament to her, her abilities as an actress, I think, you know. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's sometimes um, a little overwhelming that... And, and, and fantastic that so many people have said the same sort of thing that you're saying, that Julia Ogden has had a huge effect on them. I met a lot of people just over the weekend in Seattle, some really young women who are so emotional that they, you know, they've sort of, it's changed them, it's had a huge effect and I understand how that can happen and particularly to women. Um, She's a really fabulous character, and it's a credit to the writers uh, to have written such a strong woman, a woman that doesn't seem to um, be obsessed with a lot of the things that uh, women today are a little frustrated by. Everything on television is about sex, and everybody's giving it away. Everybody's, you know, the, the, the opposite of Julia. Julia has this respect for herself and for other people and for everything liberal and she's a powerful amazing character so I understand um, is am I like that I don't know I, I you know I'm so completely different from Julia that I feel at times that I disappoint people <laughs> she's incredibly graceful I'm terribly clumsy uh, she's very pious and I swear like a you know a mofo? I'm Australian, you know, we're a little <laughs> crass, frankly. I clean up, but you know, this is not really me. Um, but, but, you know, I probably have some things in common. 
I am a liberal thinker. I, you know, I get feisty about things, you know, in the same way. <laughs> But Julia Wood, of course, you know, something that is natural for you, writers tend to, you know, they see what comes naturally for you and they, they write accordingly. I'm the first one to say, let me do something like ride a horse and jump off something. Like, I, I, you know, I love to do those kinds of adventurous things that we see Julia doing. Um, mm -hmm. I believe in causes and, and, and helping when you can in the way Julia would. And I believe, you know, and all people should have their rights, you know, and I strongly believe. So in that way, yes, I am very similar to Julia. Thank you. If that answers your question. It does. Thank you. Thank you. Great. And then over here to the right, sir. Hi, I'm Alex from Toronto. A uh, question for Yannick and Peter and everybody. Last weekend at Word on the Street, Maureen Jennings said she was starting to think about a new Murdoch mystery story to be set in 1917 where Murdoch is 56. So the question is, are you all ready to uh, do another 13 seasons? <laughs> Wise move on her part. <laughs> 13 more? That's I don't know. The, 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 first the joke ten... on set is, will we make it till, till the First World War, right? <laughs> the first I... 10 went by so quickly, I don't know. I could just, who knows? I'm thinking that the clothes would be really way more flattering at that point. I'd be into that. <laughs> I could do all this in a flapper dress way easier. Yeah, I'd be happy to. However, I'd be like 60. Of course, yeah. <laughs> That's not going to look that good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, over here to the left, please. Uh, hi, um, I'm Katya. And first off, I just want to say you guys are amazing. And Mr. Harris, you're my favorite stand up. Just saying. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Mine Thank you too. very much. Don't call him Mr., it's going to go to his head. <laughs> his mom called just before he came out here today. <laughs> Do you have a question for Johnny? Yes. No, it's for the entire cast. Great. Um, after 10 years of doing this, do you find that you still get creative satisfaction? That, yeah, that's an interesting question. I mean, I think there's, um, yeah, there, there's, uh, I guess, pros and cons with doing a show for so long. Um, I, uh, it, it's nice to be in, in a comfortable rhythm. I mean, we, we sometimes joke around saying that the show shoots itself right now. Uh, I feel like the the, the writing gets uh, stronger every year. I feel like we all sort of know our characters inside and out. It's nice to be on a show that's lasted this long insofar as the depth of the, um, the world uh, that, that the fans get to know. I love that... Um, secondary characters uh, mean something to, to fans. I love during the screening just now, the first time you see Eva Pierce and the whole room is sort of, you know, cat call uh, ooing at, at uh, this. And I like that. I like that there's a sort of a, all these secondary characters and um, a, 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 a deeper sort of more fleshed out world that we've, that we've managed to create. Yeah. It's true. It allows for um, the, the kind of satisfaction you get when instead of having to define a character, you can just take a character to a new place. You know, it, it, you, you don't have to, um, it, there's a deepening, if you like, so you can keep going deeper, which I'm sure is the case with the writing as well. They find ways to, there's a shorthand because people know what to, who, who you're, you're dealing with and what the character is, is made of. And so you can head off in a different direction and have a really great effect on the audience. Great, and then uh, over here to the right, please. Uh, I was just gonna add I'm one sorry. thing. Um, you know, when you set out as a, as a young actor, you, you hope that someday you'll do meaningful things. Um, and at this point, I had never dreamed that I would be involved in something that would be so meaningful to a whole country and around the world. So uh, this is by far exceeded anything that I ever imagined in my, my little mind. So being, being a part of it is, um, if I can get just an ounce more, I'll take it. So. Go ahead, sir. Um, I have a question for Peter. What's the hardest part of directing? Uh, the weather. 
the, the weather, the, the hours, the weather, uh, just the physicality of it. It's it's uh, uh, 14 hours a day and trying to keep your brain working and uh, and having to think all the time is exhausting because I don't only want to think as much as I have to. <laughs> and so it's, you're physically tired and you have to constantly be solving puzzles all day. And, and solving night. puzzles is fun for a few hours, but after a while it's like, could somebody else please just solve this puzzle for me? <laughs> so that's the hardest thing about directing. And then over here on the left, please. Uh, hi, I just want to say I love all of you. You act very well. And um, my question is, what's your favorite episode? You want me to start? Uh, I think you directed this one, actually. Uh, uh, the Cloud of Doom. Oh, yeah. I think that's my favorite one. That was so much fun. There was a lot of action, and like we were evacuating the city, and these bombs, and... The gas mask, the evil guy in the gas mask in the big leather, like, trench coat. That was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that one. Uh, mine's a toss-up between Kung Fu Crabtree and uh, Holy Matrimony. Kung Fu Crabtree, because it was super cool to have martial artists on set. That was amazing. And then, obviously, Holy Matrimony, because that was just so much fun to be Margaret sort of wigging out about someone else's wedding. And... Uh, <laughs> Just playing that was so much fun. So that's, those are my two, sorry. <laughs> um, I'd have to say the ragtime episode. It was obviously before I was on the show, but I thought that episode was really beautiful. I had a bunch of friends who were on it and um, I actually auditioned for it. Didn't get the part, was super bummed out. <laughs> but you know, life works out. Just, as well, just yeah. as well you didn't, I guess. Yeah. Or that's the thing, right? We, we, we just had a young chap on. I was talking to him on set last night, and he said he's auditioned for the show several times. And he plays, he's got a really cool role in this episode that we've just shot. And uh, he said he's auditioned several times. And he's, he's really glad now that he didn't land a, a smaller part earlier because he, he would no longer have been eligible. So it's sort of a... Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. I feel very, very glad that I didn't get that part. <laughs> Tom? Yeah, uh... As an actor on the show, when my son got kidnapped, but as, as an audience member watching it, uh, the Bat Masterson, because I, I just, he was my favorite guest actor, Stephen Ogg. So I just find that episode, I could watch that over and over. Uh, I'll just, uh, one funny comment about uh, Christian's uh, favorite episode where they're evacuating the city and there's one little scene where I have to go scoop up a, a kid. His mom is calling out for him and I have to go and get a, a little kid, scoop him up and run up the road. But nobody had told this kid, so I just went over to him before we shot. <laughs> Before we shot, and, and it's working with kids. Is, I mean, their their brains are all over the place. So I go over to this. Little, he's maybe eight or nine years old, and I say, I was like, okay, listen, when when the cameras roll, I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna pick you up, and we're gonna go that way. And he just looks up at me, and goes, "Are you a teenager?" <laughs> yeah. It was just I, I thought. Why did what they say that? What are they thinking? Their mom had said, never go with a teenager. If there's a teenager that says, come with me, and they said, never, he was going to say, no. Nope. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> what's your favorite episode? Question? I can't remember. I think I did. Oh. No, is, is, what's your favorite episode, Johnny? Yeah, oh, geez, I don't know. Uh, you, you know, uh, uh, Kung Fu Crabtree was a blast for me to do. Uh, way back in the day, I think first season, there was one called The Annoying Red Planet, uh, where there's crop circles and Crabtree thinks there's Martians and stuff like that. Yeah, there was a couple of uh, uh, scenes uh, from that. It was, it was definitely the first season because there was a couple scenes from that episode that I auditioned for, for the role of Crabtree with. Um, where he's, he goes to Murdoch and he's hypothesizing about how that guy ended up in the tree, hanging from the tree, right? And that was, yeah, I got called in. I think Yannick had been cast. I came in for a callback. So they were trying a few different people out with Yannick as, uh, you know, they, a chemistry sort of, and, and uh, we did a couple of those scenes, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. It's actually only you and Lachlan that I read with. Oh, is that right? Yep. I read with you. You're a woman. Different, different, different. Oh, okay. <laughs> of, the, of the constables. Of the there were constables. only two constables. Oh, I see. 
Yeah, their minds were made up. But I think the Lachlan uh, read for Crabtree when we uh, when the show was being cast, and at the time there wasn't Higgins, and they liked Lachlan's uh, audition so much. Uh, I got the role, thank God, knock on wood. <laughs> but they liked him so much, they 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 put in a. a I remember that when Lachlan. When did Lachlan start in the show? Year two. No. Oh, okay. Because so I remember you going, you know, he and I auditioned together. I got the role, but now they seem to like him better. Like, I'm getting a bit worried. I remember you thinking that. <laughs> like, now he's here. The two of us are here. Yeah. Anyway, that's <laughs> all worked out. <laughs> um, I have to say, cometh the archer, just because I got to do so much cool shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. There are children here. I can't, uh, sorry. That was um, a very good one. <laughs> Yeah, Come With The Archer was fun. I really like to do stunts just any time I get to do anything, which is, you know, as Julia, it's not that often with those skirts on. But, um, and the other one I really liked, I don't know what season it was, but the Titanic episode is what I call it. What did we call it? Oh, yeah. Season seven. Seven? What is it? Ahoy. Murdoch Ahoy. Murdoch Ahoy. Yeah, those sets were awesome. I mean, it, when they sunk this whole set into a swimming pool and lots of swimming in, in long dresses and... Yeah, it was fun, both of those. Yeah, that's, that, yeah. You, you know, it's funny when the TV's on late at night or whatever, and, and one of the uh, previous seasons uh, episodes will come on, I, I, I watch and I pretty much always laugh, I, you know, because I remember being there and I was like, maybe that's my favorite. Oh, maybe that's my favorite. It's hard to pick. But I would have to say the Bat Masterson episode uh, was my favorite. I got to direct that one, and a lot of things lined up, and it really became a lot better than <laughs> the extent of my talent directing. So I was really, really relieved. Uh, we got a fabulous actor to play Bat Masterson, Stephen Ogg. At, at the last minute, um, we had lost who we th thought would be good for the role. And... Um, it sort of it was an opportunity to do a whole bunch of cool movie making stuff that I dreamt of doing my whole life. A, a shootout, I got to plan it all out because it's difficult with all the different directions people are shooting at each other and um, throwing people out of barns. Uh, uh, you had, you had the, the hooker with a golden heart, you know, all that stuff. It was, uh, it was uh, heart of gold, hooker with heart of gold, sorry. He's the writer. <laughs> I just really enjoyed that one. Uh, how about you, Peter? Have you got a favorite? And then we've got time for yeah. one more question. Uh, I'd say probably my, f again, like Yannick, I, uh, I like a lot of them for different reasons, but as, as a sort of complete Murdoch, I kind of like the two-parter we did with Julia and the suffragettes and Tommy and, and the gang down at the waterfront. Yeah. Uh, which that big brawl was awesome. Of a lot of, of, of movie making into it and also was a nice collision of crime story, personal story and political story with the suffragettes and the, the beginning of organized crime and also our guys banding together. Uh, plus I thought it was just a very well done episode. Okay, and final questions going over here to the right. Um, I have a question for Yannick, but first of all, to touch on a couple things you spoke about when you were here yourself. You never bore me when you talk or tweet about bikes. And I love your idea of a silent episode. I always think all of you are really expressive, so I think you guys could do that really well. But for my question, um, you're really good at what I call physical distress scenes, like when Murdoch has drowned in Murdoch Ahoy, or when he was in the cage with the carbon monoxide. So when you read in the script um, those scenes, are you like, this is gonna be an interesting day, or are you like, let's get this out of the way? And how do you prepare for it? Because someone who was a lifeguard said the way you portrayed recovering from drowning was spot on. To be honest, uh, I think about what the audience, how they'll react. What, what do I think will, resonate most with the audience and um, I don't know that the hat thing was ever actually a written line I don't remember but I remember at the time thinking what's gonna be the first thing that comes to mind for him when he comes to and what would the audience 
want to hear from him in that moment. And, and that's what I approach a lot of the physical distress stuff with is, is um, sort of a, as an audience member, what are we going to, what are we going to point to? Cool. And do you enjoy those scenes or are they kind of difficult? Well, selfishly, I, I want, you know, the entire world to go, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, and it's not a bad business model either. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody on the panel. Thank you, everybody here in the audience today. You've been fantastic. Thanks for coming out, everybody. And one last thing. Remember that season 10 premieres Thanksgiving Monday, October the 10th at 8. Murdoch Mondays are back. <laughs> Thank you, everybody on the panel. You have a helmet to sign backstage, yep. so, yep. and I have a draw to make, so we'll get going on that. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks, thanks everybody, for coming thanks, out. We really, really do appreciate it.